Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. Thechrisvossshow.com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. We've got the most excellent author, and uh, he's got a wonderful book we're going to be talking about on the show today. But before that, take your friends, relatives, neighbors, uh, just grab their phone and subscribe them to The Chris Voss Show or the uh, CBPN dot com the chris voss podcast network there's nine podcasts over there with over 500 episodes oh my gosh you can just listen to podcasts and never leave your house for like weeks at a time not that i'm saying you should or shouldn't but eh, go ahead i mean you know you might learn something anyway guys we certainly appreciate you tuning in go to youtube.com for us chris voss and if you're listening to the audio portion of our podcast you can watch uh, jude morrow who we're going to be talking to here in a second uh, you can watch him on YouTube to see the video that we are making today. So uh, today, as I mentioned before, we have the infamous Jude Morrow on the show. Uh, he is a speaker, an author, and an autistic voice. Uh, from an early age, Jude knew he was different, uh, following an early childhood filled with quirky behaviors, uh, marginalization. Jude was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. Uh, with the support of his parents, Jude navigated through school and university, albeit with difficulty. Uh, Jude's life changed when he discovered he was going to be a father. Uh, Coming to terms with becoming a parent and denying his Asperger's diagnosis started to cause a rift between Jude and his infant child. This is a view of life and love through the eyes of an autistic adult from nonverbal and aggressive to acceptance and letting go. He's published the book, Why Does Daddy Always Look So Sad? A memoir that you can find on his website and Amazon.com. Welcome to the show, Jude. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, Chris. Thanks uh, so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks for the time to, thanks for being on the show and educating our family, uh, our audience here. Um, And uh, give us the websites people can go to check you out, order the book and all that good stuff. Well, my website is www.judemorrow.com. I'm at judemorrow10 on Twitter, uh, judemorrow author on Facebook, and my uh, debut book memoir, Why Does Daddy Always Look So Sad, is available from all major online retailers and bookstores. I got that down to a T. There you go, man. You sound like one of those commercials. You got it nailed, buddy. One breath and everything. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> all right. I'm, I, when I publish my book, I'm calling you to pitch it. Please um, do. So, uh, let's talk about your origin story, how you grew up, uh, and we'll get to why you, how you got here. Well, I grew up uh, in a pretty familiar environment. I had uh, one mother, one father, one older sister, Emily. Just one? Uh, just one, yeah. <laughs> one picket fence, one dog. And although that's uh, pretty much a typical nuclear family type scene, that's where most of the normality ends. Um, I always knew I wasn't quite like everybody else. It took me much longer to walk, to talk, to mix with my peers. And my parents always knew that although I was intelligent and could understand, I just couldn't communicate uh, very well. So I went to a couple of playgroups whenever I was young, uh, or kindergartens as uh, be known in the States. And the one before I went to primary school was a playgroup for mixed abilities. So that's where I went. Uh, that would have had everything from Down syndrome, uh, autistic children like me, or uh, other uh, classical learning disabilities as well. So I was one of the first kind of wave of autistic children to go into mainstream school uh, in the UK and Ireland, because before that, uh, maybe towards the late 1980s, autistic children would have went to special education schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I went to a um, just a mainstream uh, school and secondary school, uh, although I had a classroom assistant follow me pretty much everywhere except uh, to go to the bathroom or eat. And I needed a lot of extra assistance from teachers, especially in subjects that I wasn't really interested in, but I had to do anyway. And despite all of that, despite all the hardships and challenges as I viewed them then, I uh, went on to university and trained as a social worker. I know it's a bit ironic that the guy who wrote a book about all his social difficulties actually grew up and became a social worker. (laughs) Uh, I, I suppose that's a different story. And... Whenever I was a young man, well, I still kind of am. It's my 30th birthday in August, but I mean a younger man at 22, whenever I had a university degree and a car and was over six feet in height and started to grow a beard, that 
being autistic was something that only really affected little people. Like, I mean, when, you, when people think of autism, they think of the classical white male child in a corner building things. Mm-hmm. And I suppose that's suppose where my mind was too, even as an autistic person. But in November 2012, I found out I was going to be a dad. I know mm-hmm. I would have a, a little child of uh, my own. And it was then that the kind of, the uh, autistic kind of want for thirst for knowledge and what was going to happen and my inability to cope with the unknown uh, started to come back to haunt me I suppose because being autistic was something that I'd left behind and whenever Ethan was born on the 23rd of July 2013 uh, I mean children grow up really really quickly (laughs) like (laughs) he was walking and talking and I mean being rude and being playful and every day was just so different and I just couldn't cope with this because I mean babies aren't really robotic creatures they don't wake up at the same time they don't eat the same things they're not interested in the same (laughs) things all the time and my struggle with Ethan's kind of early childhood and my refusal to accept that I was autistic uh, led Ethan to ask what will hopefully become the most uh, iconic question in all of literature to my mother and it was why does daddy always look so sad? Mm-hmm. And the, re- the reason I did look so sad is because I didn't come to terms with the fact that I was autistic and I had a real shame and resentment of my own childhood. And mm-hmm. it was then I knew mm-hmm. I had to go on the kind of t- cheesy, stereotypical, motivational speakery journey to enlightenment and preaching to the world. Was some of it, was some of it denial or was it just... Um... Was it just uh, just just not accepting it or understanding the limits that uh, or the issues that were happening between you and your child? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I I was in no way blissfully unaware. I mean, a lot of people would uh, use the term a lack of understanding of the world around them, and believe me, Chris, I totally understand the world around me, warts and all. I suppose it was denial. I knew I was different. I knew I wasn't quite like everybody. And I always kind of craved approval because I felt so inadequate and enough myself uh, that over time it just became absolutely exhausting. And my life was a bit like Hollywood method acting. Uh, Mm -hmm. I was in this in character and I was the class clown or village idiot or whatever uh, way you want to look at it uh, for most of my life. And it just didn't come to terms with it. And I suppose whenever Ethan was young, I didn't want Ethan to have the same kind of childhood or life experience as what I had. And I suppose I maybe babied him and smothered him a bit too much and just worried all the time. Mm Mm-hmm. It's easy to do because you're a parent and you you love your child and and uh, you you want the best for him. So um, so what what came about? Uh, what instigated writing the book? What brought you down that pathway? Well, I've always been a prolific reader and writer just for for fun, and I always wanted to uh, write a book. And I didn't I didn't decide what type of book that would be. Whether it would be I don't know science fiction or a, a book about the Titanic or carpet samples. I don't know. I just wanted to have something out there with mm-hmm. my name on it. And Ethan is such an aware child. I mean, he misses absolutely nothing, and he's starting to realize now that Daddy's not quite like him. Mm-hmm. And he would describe me as fussy, and Daddy likes doing things at certain times. <laughs> but like he would, he would uh, point to the clock and say, "You know, when the big hands at the top and the small hands at the bottom, that's when Daddy likes to eat dinner, which is six o'clock." So he realizes those things. <laughs> and I wanted to have like an account of what my early life was like growing up as an autistic child, because I'm not, I'm not like him, and his early life as well so that that record is there mm-hmm. and uh, like 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 every as- aspiring writer i really believed in my story thought it was um a real important thing for me to get it published mm-hmm. um when at, at the start I, I i didn't go anywhere and i decided to self-publish it and it just seemed to resonate with so many people so many wow. autistic people so many parents mm-hmm. because i I've, I've been there like the, the children that parents are worrying about. I was that child and my mother was them. You know, it's yeah. it's a very relatable story and 
it, it's so common. I mean, uh, autism and autistic children and people touch nearly every single family. And a lot of memoirs are about, I mean, surviving in outrageously difficult conditions like climbing Everest with no oxygen or uh, mm -hmm. living in the rainforest for 30 days, surviving only on urine. But my story is <laughs> is a daily thing. And it, it's, it's so unremarkable that it seems to have become remarkable i haven't got my head around that one i've stopped trying yeah uh, and and we've seen a lot more uh understanding uh acceptance adoptance more more and more people seem to be understanding the spectrums of autism um and the challenges i think everyone knows somebody these days especially here in america i don't know i i seem to have either a lot of friends on facebook or uh friends with children that are having it you know i had a hard enough time with me and my father and we didn't have any uh issues other than just being dad and a son and and i i can't imagine having you know to deal with the difference of, of aspects and the challenges that come from that and so there's and so this book you you go around you speak uh on this you say it's resonating with a lot of people does uh is, so you're finding it's helping a lot of folks that are on both uh the parent and the child side yeah, definitely, because I, I would, would speak to so many groups, I mean, locally and now internationally, because we have Zoom. Mm -hmm. And the kids always ask, at all of my live shows, the kids always ask the most questions because they know I'm like them. <laughs> and I, 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 I can understand them. And it's funny that uh, with uh, we autistics, we tend to test each other. And I'll give a bit of a funny story where um, a, uh, a child had said, um, you know, do you like cars? And I, I love cars. I'm a real, real car freak. And I, I used to line them up in my windowsill in my my mum's house. And he he pulled a car, a toy car, out of his pocket and said, "What type of car is this?" And of course, I knew it. I said, <laughs> "That that is a Porsche 550 Spider." And I said, "Well, for all the rest of the parents in here, uh, I said that is uh, the car that James Dean died in." And then his hand went up again, huh? and he said. Well, he was actually thrown 15 meters from the car. He didn't oh, wow. die in the car. And I said, right, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's all uh, lighthearted and, and fun as well at the same time because I viewed my life as one challenge after another, mm -hmm. which I suppose it was, but I had to get a kind of a different lens uh, to look at my life. And I suppose I realized it was more one victory after another mm -hmm. as opposed to one challenge or one setback after another and I suppose it gives parents hope that autistic children can grow up to live uh, happy and successful lives and I mean that's the, the mission that I'm on is because I don't want any children to feel the way I did whenever I was young and that I hated myself and just did everything destructible to yeah. fit in with everybody else which wasn't the right thing to do. Well, you, you. I mean, it. I, I can't. I can't imagine living in a world because it's. I think it's. My perception of it is, is you feel almost alien, and 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 you feel very different than us. The communication level is different. Uh, I know with my uh, friend's uh, son who's uh, autistic. You know, he doesn't talk much. Uh, he goes to speech therapy, uh, and then any time that I'm zooming with them, he'll come in the room and be like, "Hi, Chris." And I'll be like, hey, and we'll have a little conversation. Then he'll look down his iPad and leave. And and I'm just always so overjoyed when he talks to me because I'm like, they're, they're like, he likes you. He talked to you. He likes you. I, I think it's awesome. Um, one of my favorite uh, videos that I ever saw was Katy Perry with a young girl who uh, did her song. Um, I forget the uh, name uh, of it, but uh, uh, she. I, I, we've seen some aut autistic people that they, they don't communicate much, but if you give them a piano or a musical outlet, they, they just become these beautiful um, um, uh, beings that, that can share their uh, stuff. Uh, I noticed, I think I know somewhere on either your Facebook or your Twitter, uh, you guys had um, a, a, a discussion or some sort of post. I know the young lady, um, uh, and I forget her name. I, I'm just forgetting names today. Is it Gretchen? She's the, um, she's the climate change gal. Oh, Greta Thunberg. Um, Greta Thunberg. Why am I getting Gretchen from Greta Thunberg? She, yeah, she, yeah. She, she's in the she's in the club. Yeah, she's yeah, in the, she's in the club. club too, wasn't it? Yeah. 
And there's a lot of brilliant people that are they're artistic in the autistic spectrum. I mean, I've seen the videos of the savants. You know, there's one gentleman, he can name like every postal zip code in America. I can barely name my own. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, autistic people uh, have been there all, all through the ages. Mm -hmm. uh, as more understanding and acceptance of neurodiversity and autism exists, it's been shown that some of the most talented people ever do have loved. Look at Einstein, Michelangelo, mm -hmm. yeah. Mozart. It's that drive. It's that passion. And whenever the, the nearly the other first, uh, one of the first things that comes to people's minds when the autistic discussion is happening is challenges or obstacles. Mm -hmm. And one of those is obsessive and repetitive behavior. Like, can you imagine someone said to Michelangelo, nah, put your paintbrushes down, stop <laughs> painting. You know, you need, you, you need to, you need to stop doing that. You do. And it's, uh, it's something I, I said, I remember with, uh, wh whenever the book was uh, self-published, uh, I suppose the happy side to it now is that it is published now. It's published by uh, Beyond Words, the publisher of The Secret, and uh, the publisher, uh, oh, wow. the publishers, uh, uh, Michelle and Richard Cohn, we, we, went, uh, we went for lunch in Frankfurt, and I said that to them. And I just, uh, I just the, their reaction was like, yeah, right enough, and, you know, if you, you look at all these famous and talented people through the ages, and it leads me to think that without autistic people, God knows where mankind would be. Would we yeah. still be uh, uh, spearing fish and living in caves and having, you know, to, you know, survive in the wilderness? Who knows? Yeah, but the, I mean, technically, uh, I mean, there's a there's a broad spectrum of people in the world, and everybody uh, should be able to contribute and be able to be a part of our society. And uh, I think once we start looking down on certain people and going, "Well, you have nothing to contribute," and closing off their minds, uh, I think it's great that autistic people are now more and more accepted. Uh, everyone I know seems to be learning more and understanding. Uh, there's, of course, the variations of the spectrum, but uh, I think it's great. Um, the more we learn to understand one and each one another and how we and how to communicate better and communicate with each other, it's really important. And it can just make for, you know, I, I ran my business three years where I would always say, I don't care who has the best idea as long as we have, you know, we find the right idea and, and stuff. So um, how people can contribute and be a part of our society is really important. Uh, what are some of the other things in your book you want to? Uh, take a mention or plug or things you think can be helpful? Well, the the book as a whole, it, it kind of gives two perspectives. It got, goes from my childhood right up until I was 25, mm -hmm. uh, 26, you know, the that, that kind of age bracket in the book. So, you know, for autistic people and, and parents, you know, it has such a, a wide reach and it's not just a book for autistic people. I Look, I know it's, it's a PR no-no to say this is a book for everybody, but th there's one underlying message that doesn't really have to specifically sit with autistic people. It is that whenever you accept and love yourself, good things happen. Because mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I did. Autistic? No way. That's not me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like that. And now I, I, I scream it from the rooftops. I've had a complete perspective change and... <laughs> Uh, and that can go, that can go for anything, whether it's physical disability, mental health. It could go for anything. Whenever you accept and love yourself and the hand that you have in life, and how you can improve it and change it and better it, uh, the ha the happier people will be. And I suppose that's the real, true underlying message. And I mean, a lot of people can have scars from their childhood that deeply yeah. affect them into yeah. adulthood, which I did have. So mm -hmm. face them acknowledge them, smash them, move on with your life and tell everybody about them and the hope that you can help someone else. I think a lot of us are on that journey, whether we know it or not. And, and, and there comes a time in our, in our adulthood where we have to like look at our childhood and go, you know, wow, okay, that seems to have had an effect. I know I, over time I've looked back on things in my life and you can see the pattern. You can, it's much easier to have hindsight because you can see the patterns of your life you know you can go wow okay i've really been operating a certain way for a while uh how did your son receive the book he absolutely loved it and yeah. he loved hearing about himself in, in the book and <laughs> <I'm famous. laughs> he, i mean ethan with with ethan and me whenever we did book signings and so on mm -hmm. um we met groups 
Ethan does something special for me, and I'll tell you what it is. Hmm. I'm not great at, like, I, I, if you and I ran into each other, I wouldn't be like, oh, hello, Chris, my name is Jude Morrow. I am the author of this wonderful, life-changing book. I mean, Ethan sort of does that for me. Like, whenever the Queen, <laughs> whenever, like, whenever the Queen has a public engagement, do you know the way she has a guy in white gloves that says, this is the Queen? Like, <laughs> Ethan, Ethan does that for me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's there it's so go. funny, and uh, I'll 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 tell another funny one about Ethan. Like this is this is this is just how Ethan and I are poles apart, and it's the main reason why I love him too. We were at a famous fast food chain that involves famous arches, <laughs> and we were we were sitting enjoying our ice creams when Ethan gasps, <gasps> and I said, "What, Ethan? What's wrong?" And he went. And there was a, a lady sitting just reading it. We could oh, see her like your this. book. Oh yeah, my gosh. Uh, yeah. And oh. the, and then I said, Ethan, don't. And then he went. And then I I just turned for one second. And then I looked back at him. And there he is, standing beside her, pointing over me. That's my daddy's book. That's, is it? That's me. And that's him. And there was me. I was like, I. Well, and then, you... and then surely the pen came out of the purse, and I was like, oh, "I'm happy to sign your book." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, you've got a PR agent as a son, then. <laughs> so. Oh, he's oh, oh he's oh he is great. I mean, he is gonna he he is gonna go far. He Where he's a know? real he's a real people person, and even whenever we get photographed, he has the Hollywood smile and he has the pose, and he knows what way to put his hands, and he knows wow. how to. He's great. Yeah, he's gonna be an actor brilliant. someday or something. There you go. He's gonna Fingers walk crossed. the red carpet. There you go. Um, <laughs> well, I think it's great. It's it's a, it's a it's a good document of your journey in accepting yourself and and uh, and your catharsis of of who you are and what you're about, and then trying to find a way to integrate that with your child and the differences that you guys have in communication and and approach different things. and And I think it's great. I I think uh, you know my father had his issues. Um, I don't know, maybe I was born into this world with some issues, who knows. Um, but I don't know why my father had issues. And the biggest contention that we had actually most of our life was his issues. Um, and uh, probably the residual of his issues that he gave me <laughs> from being a child. And uh, it didn't take us till our 70s to resolve those issues. And even then, I'm not sure they were fully resolved, but we forgave each other. And, and uh, there came a time where I knew that um, – the time was sure with him, uh, you know, his health was in deterioration, dementia, et cetera, et cetera. But all of our life, we had loggerheads with each other. And, uh, and, and so him not dealing, and there, there was one time, I think in 2009, where he came to us and he, he'd had, um, he'd had a disconnection with his, uh, he had some narcissism and some disconnection with us emotionally. And, uh, and I don't know what it was from his upbringing or whatever, but he'd, he'd seen a psychiatrist and, and realized that he came to us and, and, uh, but not being able to do that early on in childhood, I think definitely has some scars. So I think it's awesome that you have been able to bridge that gap with your child, where they're still at a young age, where they're still impressionable and where they can understand you better. Uh, because I, I had a hard time understanding my father. Um, and I think he had a hard time understanding himself. Um, and, uh, I think he meant well, but you know, everyone does the best they can. And it's, it's a highly compressed situation being a parent of a child. You love them so much and, and you're trying to communicate with them and they're a very different person than you, uh, in every case. I mean, I, I was very different than my father in personality and, and how we, uh, how we just approach things. Um, so I think it's great that you feel to f figure out a way to bridge that gap and then been a bit of leader for other people who are going through these challenges. Um, you know, that's the one thing I found is, uh, with a lot of my friends who have Asperger's, who have autism on the spectrum, when they're working with other people in a working environment, uh, we don't do a lot of training in work environments and how to deal with each other and communicate better and stuff. Uh, even in like school, there should be more training. I wish they just teach basic communication at school. Like they teach English, but we really don't teach how to really talk to each other and understand and levels of communication and, and nuances, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe we'll come to that, but it's really great. So you travel, you travel in the world, you speak, you 
Um, you've got the book, um, you talk to different people. Um, and I think it's great. You talk to young kids that are going through, uh, classes because that, I know that my friends who have children that are autistic, that's their biggest, you know, trying to understand their child, trying to communicate, um, yeah. sometimes trying to get them to do <laughs> they you know, go to bed, <laughs> that sort of thing. That can be well, a real it's, um, the, 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 the biggest uh, stigma attached to being autistic and autism as a whole is that so many people, whether it's parents, whether it's society at large, knowingly or unknowingly, want autistic people to conform to them yeah. and their wants and, and their desires. And, and that's not the way things should be. It should just be an unconditional acceptance that being autistic yeah. is simply a different format of thought and belief and perception of of uh, the world around us because because I perceive the world differently for example because you're here you it doesn't mean that my I don't understand the world around me really what it is is that we perceive the world differently mm -hmm. and that's ab that's absolutely fine and a lot of parents would ask a lot of questions the same the questions that my parents would have asked when I was growing up like how will you manage in secondary school well, how will you manage in the workforce how will you manage being a parent? How will you manage during COVID-19? Although that's not really in the book, but uh, we, we were it's out before too. that. <laughs> but, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe, perhaps. And uh, I mean, I hope that I can answer some of those questions as well. And because a lot of parents will worry and that's fine as, uh, you know, what are things going to be like when things get mm -hmm. older? And um, I hope that I, I can shed some light and give a bit of hope in that as well. That's awesome. I think I think it's great because I know I've seen the journey some of my friends and parents have been on. Uh, I know, like like I said, I've had I've had my uh, friends that are autistic that have talked about their issues at work, communication, and 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 that's why I mentioned it. It can feel very. I can imagine it can feel very alien because, like you said, we're all trying to make you conform to us when really we just need to understand how you communicate, and we need to find a place to uh, work together and meet in the middle and make everyone happy when it comes down to it and, yeah, hof and hopefully that's a journey we're all on as in a as in a as a society i mean we're seeing you know a lot of different things that are going on with protests and and stuff riots that are going on right now because we're not communicating with each other properly we're not taking care of each other properly and we're not being concerned about other people and um, we're not listening very yeah. well so <laughs> that's what we need to do so this is yeah. pretty awesome like it's it's funny too. Another misconception that you that you say is uh, that you know a lot of people believe that autistic people um, don't aren't empathetic or aren't caring or are quite robotic. And I suppose this is a bit of a, a, a topical statement. This one, I would bet my life an autistic police officer wouldn't put their knee on someone's neck. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm fed up trying to get people. Like the logic that 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 people have. I mean. The world, I mean, I, 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 I look at the news at the moment and I think, thank goodness I live in a <laughs> tolerant, happy island that everyone claims lineage from. Yeah. Like, every everyone in America, oh, I'm a third Irish from X amount of relatives uh, long before me. And it's it's really scary, man. It is. It yeah. really, you know, the way things are in America and some deep-rooted uh, issues seem to be very much still in society at large and it's something mm -hmm. i just can't get my head around don't think yeah. that's an autistic thing though and i i don't think so like even i uh was really shocked i thought when we uh had obama as a as a uh african-american president i voted for him uh i thought we would kind of started you know making some real progress turns out we we just found out how angry people were in a closet of racism um yeah. but i suppose uh I don't know. It, 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 we have to see how that story ends, I guess, in November, January, when this gentleman will be leaving office. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. But I think it's great what you do. I think it's awesome. People should check out the book. Uh, give us your plugs so people can uh, go check them out and order up the book and get to know. I mean, even if you don't know somebody who has autism, understanding the difference of what of the communication style and, and how we interpret things is really important to do because you're going to come across someone and, uh, and being able to communicate with them is going to be very important. So shoot us your, uh, shoot us your dot coms if you would, Jude. 
Oh, sorry. That was that, that was that, that that was my go to. Uh, that was my long roundabout <laughs> there. Sorry. I said to, to, to speak. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was the closing statement or whether it was for me to say a bit more. Okay. Um, my uh, website is www.judemorrow.com. Uh, reach out to me. I have a contact page for the speaking and the, the book questions, and I'm very uh, I'm very available uh, on social media. I'm not one for playing it cool. And if anyone asks me questions while uh, they're reading, why does daddy always look so sad? Please ask them because to date I've answered every single one from around the world that people have asked uh, about uh, my experience. I want to offer as uh, authentic and interactive an experience as possible. And once again, the book's available on Amazon.com, all major online retailers and book depository as well. So um, have a look, check it out, read it. And please, please ask questions because I love hearing people's stories as well as telling my own of course that's awesome we need a we need a world where you communicate better with each other we understand each other better and uh rising tide lifts all boats so uh thanks jude for being here thanks to my audience for tuning in uh be sure to go to the cbpn.com the chris foss podcast network subscribe to all nine podcasts over there you can go to uh youtube.com for just chris foss and you can see our video uh interview with jude morrow here he is the author of why Does Daddy Always Look So Sad? A memoir. Check it out on Amazon and all your other booksellers out there on the marketplace. Thanks for you for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time.